Hi, Pete Doherty, Albany Times Union. Sierra, how much did uh, the run to the Sweet 16 last year carry over to this year as far as momentum and, and confidence, that sort of thing? Um, it carried over a lot. Um, for me personally, it was an eye-opener. Uh, just playing in front of those fans, and especially Albany, playing in front of like 10,000 fans was such eye-opening, and I loved to do that, and I, I fell in love with that moment. And it kind of drove me throughout the summer to, hey, you got to get better, you got to get faster, you got to get smarter, you got to just do more to get back to where we're at right now. Um, I knew it was going to be a grind because of the production class that we were losing. I knew I was going to have a, a bigger role, um, not so like on the court, but also leadership. I knew there was a lot of freshmen coming in, so I had to get better with my mindset and um, be more focused on what I say more than what I do. Um, so, but it was it was a motivation in itself. That moment was special. Right over here. Hey guys, Jason Wolf with Buffalo News. Sierra, one of these games, if not tomorrow, but then the next one, maybe the one after that will be your last in a UB jersey. I don't know how much you've thought about that, but you've grown considerably in, in your time in Buffalo. When you look back at that, what are you going to think about? What are you going to remember most? What do you believe that you accomplished? Um, I don't know what I accomplished. I just, like, I know what I accomplished on the court, but for me, so it was more accomplishing off the court, just becoming a better person. Um, what Coach Jack grew inside of me was the person that in the character that I am today um, I, I, I have to give credit to what I've gone through at UMass too to, to have a low point in my career that made me see what you're you're working towards and you went to your bottom lows of your career and now you, you can you can peak at any time so coach Jack kind of brought that peak out of me um, so the coaching staff and so did my teammates I mean I'm going to miss more of my teammates and my coaching staff more than, you know, playing basketball um, at a college level. Of course, it's fun. I think college level is one of the most exciting levels in, in any type of sport. But just being a part of that family of, you know, the coaches and your teammates is going to be missed the most because of all the stuff that you guys don't see. Um, we take Ubers to games. Uh, you know, you get stuck in the airport because, you know, there's a flight delay of, you know, because it's snowing. All the stuff that you guys don't see is the most fun part. So I think I'm going to miss that the most, but I'm, I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm just thinking about, you know, there's there's a mission on the table and I have to, you know, along with my teammates, we have to handle that and um, just playing each minute because, like you said, it is my senior year. So. Um, hopefully, you know, to the, the fans of Buffalo, hopefully I came in and, and did did what, you know, they expected me to do and um, just had fun throughout the whole whole journey. Right here in front. How much of a challenge does UConn present for you guys and, and how well prepared are you for that and why? You say how much of a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> Summer, do you want to take that first and then <clears throat> Sierra? I mean, of course, we all know it'll be a challenge. Uh, every game is a challenge because every team wants to win. No, Nobody really wants to lose. So, I mean, we don't really try and look at it. Of course, it's UConn, but we don't try and look at it as anything different from any other game. I mean, we it's still the same 40 minutes that we got the last game. So it's still another 40 minutes that we have to prove what Buffalo basketball is capable of. And it's just to – showcase ourselves and what we're capable of and tell our story and how how long and how hard we've been working since the summertime and hopefully it pays off when we go out there and use all of our energy for those 40 minutes yeah same what she said i mean we've been the underdogs every every time we've gotten the tournament everybody thought we were going to lose the um 20 against usf last year same thing with florida state same thing with Rutgers. everybody thought we were going to lose and we're just going out there and playing buffalo basketball and showing that we can hang with the best of the best of the country um it's a blessing to be one of the 32 teams that's still playing here in the ncaa tournament i mean that's anybody's dream also um you kind of we respect them without a doubt i mean they have a uh, legendary coach legendary kids um and they've they've had that resume throughout you know the years, and what they've been able to do with women's basketball is very very respectable. But we fear no one, you know. We're very confident in what we do, and we're focused on Buffalo, and we're excited for the game tomorrow. Um, I mean, it's just a, it's just a game of basketball. They got to put the ball in the hole, and we have to put the ball in the hole. We just have to see who, who does it more. Over to the left. 
for the record, I predicted you guys would beat Rutgers yesterday in the paper. Appreciate so. that. <laughs> yeah. How has Coach helped you guys set aside that UConn mystique that she has talked about, that several of you guys have talked about since you arrived? Um, like I said before, they're getting the same opportunity that we're getting. Uh, we're both two of the 32 teams left in a tournament, and we all – been working since the summer and we all still get the same 40 minutes so I mean she doesn't try and put too much pressure and she doesn't try and make it all about our opponents ever no matter who we're playing it could be just how we're playing UConn she doesn't try and make it all about UConn but she does put some points of emphasis on okay well in order to beat them we'll have to stop this and we'll have to stop that and we don't try and make it too much about them because at the end of the day we're still playing for Buffalo and we we have to show not not really show everybody but prove to ourselves that we can do it what they're doing too same thing um <laughs> i mean you kind of started um back on one of them say like 2009 they said their role i mean coach jack always talks about when she was playing at syracuse when she was a student athlete you kind of wasn't on the radar right there um it was, it was pretty much it was syracuse and a lot of other teams and what gino was able to do with a mid-major program and bring it up to a, a bcs school is you know what coach jack is trying to do at buffalo so we're right on the realms of that and that's what we're focusing on is buffalo and you know we're just having fun with it and like i said we respect them but it's time to play tomorrow that's, that's just how it is and um they definitely have great players but they got to scout us too so that's how i see it okay down in front over here Sierra, when the when the game got really tight last night against Rutgers, um, did you did you feel sort of the same way that you felt during last year's tournament? Did you feel it kind of taking over? Like, okay, we're gonna win this. How did you get get past Rutgers in that situation? Um, I'm very confident in my teammates, and I'm very confident in myself. I'm confident in my coaching staff as well. Um, because as Summer would say, one stop, one score. That's all she says. Whenever we're down, whenever we're close, one stop, one score, and um, I think a lot of people don't realize our, our conference. Our conference put us in a great position to play games like this because of the high level that our conference has um, gr grown to. I mean, we're top eight in the country for conference. And, um, you know, we played the Central Michigans. We played the Ohios. We played the Miami Ohios. We had close games. Um, we had close games where we had to win on the buzzer. Um, so we've been prepared all season for games like this. And our coaching staff did a great job of playing those big schools in the beginning of the year as well. So we knew that if, as long as we keep it close and we have the last surge, the last momentum burst, we can get the win. Um, so it's the like I said, the game of basketball is all about the game of runs. Whoever has that last run, whoever can sustain that last run for the longest is going to win the game. So I knew that in fourth quarter, if we get one stop, one score, like Summer said, then we'll be able to put ourselves in a great position to win. There's time for one last question. We'll take it in the back. <clears throat> Uh, Sirius, for you, uh, Gino was up here about 20 minutes ago, very complimentary of you. He said... He better stop. Oh, he was. <laughs> he you got to hear it, girl. It's good. <laughs> he was talking about how you have a very good way about you. You're kind of old school in the sense that you're selfless and involve your teammates, and he was very impressed with your play. Um, just personally for you to come to Buffalo and have the success you've had, to have someone like that outside seeing that, what does that mean to you to, to get to this point? That means a lot. I mean, like I said, he's a legendary coach. Um, I used to watch him when he had Maya Moore and, and everything like that. Like, he's a legendary coach, and I respect what he has done for the game of basketball. It's, it's no doubt about it. Um, he's definitely put, you know, along with amazing other coaches, have put women's basketball on the forefront, you know, this time. And the women's movement is on a rise, and he's definitely in the front of that with women's basketball. So I definitely respect him, and I respect the, the, the great um, – comments that he made honestly I, I think it's a, a big thing and you know it's just crazy because you you watch these the, the people when you're younger like I watched the Rebecca Lobo I watched Carol Lawson and, and hear them saying that stuff about you is definitely eye-opening because like I said two years ago I was not at this point in my life and I think everybody goes through that in in their lives not only their career but their lives where they had hit a brick wall is, is this for me am I doing this right I think everybody in this room is everybody in the world has hit that that, that forefront of, you know, should I be continue this? Is, is this for me? Um, but I'm glad I stuck with it, and I'm glad that God has put me in this position to be able to um, 
express my my way of life and express my feelings and express my character. So I definitely thank him. And um, um, only way to respect that is just going out tomorrow and playing me, playing CD, and having fun with my teammates. <laughs>